Whoa. I saw a few toes tapping out there. That's, that's, that's great. We are so delighted to have you for worship. My name is Wally Williams, pastor here at, at Good Shepherd, and we are so excited that you're here online as well as here in person. Uh, we are just uh, grateful for your presence. Let me just share, um, this is going to be Communion Sunday. So those online, I'm going to ask you to get up and get a piece of bread, if you would. Get a cup and put, you know, juice or tea or, or water or whatever you want to do that. And God will consecrate those items and they will be communion for you. And we will walk through that together. So feel free to get up and get a piece of bread and, uh, and a cup of juice. And that would be helpful. Um, just, just a few announcements. Let me just um, make sure that we all know that uh, if, if those that are online wish to worship with us, um, we need a reservation. You need to call and let us know that you're coming, and then, but we need to make sure that we all mask up. Um, I have my mask right here, and so uh, we need to make sure that we uh, mask up, and so uh, your reservations are required. And also, the collections Living Young uh, continues to sponsor our food collections. Uh, for the Allen Food Pantry and the January Needs can be found in the newsletter and the uh, ACO website. And so let's just go to the Lord uh, in prayer as we open together. Let's just go to the Lord. Father God, we praise you this morning and we ask that you would speak to us. Father, as we come to this worship service um, online or in person, that you would speak to us and share with us what we are called to do as we, you know, reach out and serve others and um, in various volunteer activities around the church. Just speak to us and share with us uh, a lesson about faith. We'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Melinda is going to come and share with us the call to worship, so let's go ahead and stand together. Uh, for our call to worship, and then we'll remain standing for our opening hymn. Melinda. God the Creator is in this place. The love of God is with us. Jesus our Redeemer is in this place. The grace of our Lord is with us. The Holy Spirit is in this place. The communion of the Spirit is with us. We welcome the fullness of God's presence. God the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, be with us now and forever. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Let's remain standing for our opening hymn, Shine, Jesus, Shine. The words will be on the screen. Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of your darkness shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Shadows into your radiance by the blood I may enter your brightness. Search me, try me, consume all my darkness. Shine on me, shine on me, shine, Jesus, shine.
faces display your likeness ever changing from glory to glory mirrored here may our lives tell your story shine on And let us uh, now go to the Lord in prayer, and I'm sure that there are some concerns on your heart uh, that, that you have, and um, we just uh, ask you to utter those to God, and God will take care of those. But we want to pray for Daryl, Carrie, and, and the family, and Betty, and Amelia, Amy, Chrissy, the Utley family, Matthew, Lisa, Bill, Gary, Dick, and then, the, and then we had three this week, Terry, Adana, and Buddy. We need to be praying for those as well. Let us prepare our hearts as we are uh, going to go into the Lord uh, in prayer as we are called to prayer. Gracious Father and our God, we are grateful that you're with us at this very moment. We are grateful that you are with your people this very moment, whether they know it or not. We ask, Lord, that you would bless us in our worship, that we may sing and praise you and respond to your word in a magnificent way to give you honor and glory. Father, forgive us for those times that we have said things that we shouldn't have said and that we have done those things that we shouldn't have done. And we just ask, Lord, that you would forgive us and we thank you for the good news of the gospel that tells us that we are forgiven, that our sins are white as snow, all because of the sacrifice that took place on that hill outside Jerusalem. We give you the praise. Father, as we begin this new year, there are new opportunities before us. There are new paths that we can trod. We just pray, Father, that we will follow your leadership. There is so much that is going to happen in 2021. And we just ask, Lord, that you would bless each of us as we enter that, that new year. And that, Father, that we would experience the the new growth that you would have us to share as we grow numerically and as we grow spiritually. We just pray, Father God, that we might give you honor and glory. But remind us this year, uh, when we realize that we have nothing left, we discover that you're enough. 
we discover that you meet our needs. You give us the bread that we need. You give us the friends that we need. You give us the love that we need from our family and from our church family. We ask, Lord, that you would bless us now as we share together that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples as they prayed together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are going to be speaking about the Great Commission. And so let us uh, go make of all disciples our, our next hymn. And Mike is going to lead us, but let's stand together as we share. Go make of all disciples. time uh, we will Melinda if you would come and share with us in our Apostles Creed uh, the words will be on the screen uh, this is the the creed uh, that, that we share the affirmation of faith I believe in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of, of heaven, heaven and earth and, and in Jesus Christ his, his only Son, Son our Lord, Lord who, who was conceived, conceived by the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit born, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary Suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, in the, the life, life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. You may be seated. You may be seated. Our scripture is in Matthew 28. Matthew 28, verses 16 to 20. Uh, this is the Great Commission. 
And hear uh, Matthew's rendition of it. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee. They went to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. May God add his blessings to the reading of his holy inspired word to our hearts this day. You know, we need to stick with the fundamentals. And other than coffee or milk, there is a fundamental beverage that we consume for breakfast, orange juice. And so 30 years ago, I did the calculations uh, 30 years ago today. Uh, Well, really, it was yesterday. Um, It was on a Saturday, and I remember fixing breakfast for my kids. Um, I was fixing orange juice and pancakes. Kitty was gone uh, to one of the district uh, spouses' retreat. So uh, I was playing Mr. Mom. Lindsay, who is now, uh, she's my, my youngest. She, was, she is now 32. She was two years old. Ryan, who is now 34, was four. And Kenna, my oldest, is now 37, but she was seven. And so I had all those kids sitting around the kitchen table, and I carefully made pancakes, and then I quickly went to the freezer and got a can of orange juice. And I wanted as much juice as I possibly could get because I knew those kids would drink the orange juice, and so would I. And I pulled the can out of the freezer, and I noticed the directions on the back, but I didn't pay attention to them. And instead of putting three cans of water, I put five cans of water. And the kids didn't like it because as they drank it, I could see this sour look on their face as they drank it. And needless to say, what we have done, or what I did, was I watered down that orange juice. And sometimes... We water down the Great Commission or the Christian faith. But we are encouraged to stick with the fundamentals that we are given. And that is, the fundamentals are the mandate of Jesus. Another fundamental is the message of Jesus. And another fundamental is the mission of Jesus. So before we share in the sacrament this morning, before we share in Holy Communion, I would like for us to look at these. First, let's look at the mandate. Now, the word mandate comes from the Latin mandatum, and which simply means command. It's also been morphed into Monday, and, and a lot of us that know about Monday Thursday. And Maundy Thursday means command, or Maundy means command. And that was the great commission and the great command that Jesus gave. Adam Hamilton said, The last command of Jesus ought to be the first concern of the church. And that is making disciples. Every ministry that Good Shepherd focuses on, that we focus and plan and work with, ought to to focus on making disciples. Speaking of making disciples, just a little history here. Methodism in the 17 and 1800s became the most sought after denomination in America. In 1707, the Presbyterians came. In 1737, the the Baptist and the Mennonites set up shop in America. In 1740, the Lutherans came. 
Methodists didn't come on the scene until the 1770s. But when they came, John Wesley said, you go and offer them Christ. Hear the, hear the mandate? You go and offer them Christ. Methodists were the last people. But by, now get, hear this. But by 1844, one of, out, of, out of 52 Americans were Methodists. One out of every 52 Americans were Methodist. This is why we need to stick with the fundamentals, the mandate. The first two words of the, of the Great Commission is go, therefore go. Now notice that Jesus didn't say, therefore sit. He didn't say, therefore wait. He didn't say, therefore pause. He said, therefore, go and make disciples. And I, I feel that Jesus is encouraging us to have an active faith. The truth is Jesus can't do anything with dormant Christians. And that's what's happening to the grass outside or the grass in your front. It, it's brown, isn't it? It's dormant. It's dormant. Churches that, are, that have a dormant faith, in my opinion, cannot live. On the other side of the coin, Christians that have a growing faith can live. In James 1, 22, sojourners looked at James. Are y'all still in James? Song of Solomon. You're on Solomon, okay. Song of Solomon, great. James 1.22 says, Be doers of the word, not hearers only. So we are encouraged to put feet with our prayers. We are encouraged to put study in our Bibles. We are encouraged to put sacredness in our service to other people. We are encouraged to put generosity in our giving. So the mandate of Jesus, the command is very, very important. The second fundamental is the message of Jesus. We are to stick with the fundamental message that Jesus shared, and that is, now hear this, you do not have to be tomorrow what you are today. You do not have to be tomorrow what you are today. There's a well-known story that everybody here knows the woman caught in the act of adultery in the Gospels. She was thrown in the street and people gathered around her and they had rocks and they were going to stone her. And Jesus came on the scene. And Jesus said, He is who is out sin, who is without sin, cast the first stone. And one by one they all dropped their rocks. And this gave the woman hope. This gave the woman a, a new lease on life. She realized that she didn't have to be the same person tomorrow that she is today. You know, a preacher told me, I listen, well, I listen to a lot of sermons, and I, li I was listening to one. Um, a couple of months ago, he says, life is like a merry-go-round of meaningless activity. Life is like a merry-go-round of meaningless activity. Do you know people who wake up in the morning and then go to bed? Yes, they, in between, they eat and watch TV and work or do various things, but for, for so many people, Life just goes round and round, like a merry-go-round of meaningless activity. We have to take a pill to wake up. Some do. Some have to take a pill to go to bed. It's just devastating. But they need to be confronted with Jesus' message that 
grace is available. They need to be confronted with the message that hope is available. They need to be confronted with the message that they can have peace and they can't they don't need to worry and, and, and be stressed out. And that is our goal. That is what we are to communicate with other people. So you have the mandate, you have the message, and the mission, which is my favorite one. It's one thing to say that you believe in Christ. And it's another thing to follow his teachings. I would imagine if I had a raise of hands in here, everybody would say, hey, I believe in Christ. Christ is my Savior. Christ is my Lord. But do we follow his teachings? I have to admit, I don't follow all of his teachings all of the time. And I'm guilty of that it's one thing to live out your faith and that's what that's our goal that's that's what we are called to do i call this a genuine faith i call this whenever the rubber meets the road when this is authentic this is this this is genuine and this is when you and i represent christ through our service to other people Friends, the church, the church isn't about us. It's about those that are outside. Yeah, we we can grow in our faith through Sunday school and small groups, but it's really about going out and making disciples. The mission of the North Texas Conference is to go make disciples for Jesus Christ, for the transformation of the world. We need to take that serious. You know, having a a life that fulfills the mission of Jesus is when we are the hands of Christ. When we are Christ's hands in this community. God works through people like you and me through our hands. Speaking of hands, there's one thing that Wesley taught us. That we are, it's it's the three H's. The three H's. We are to hear God with our head. Hear God's message with our head. That's the first H. Hear God with our head, transfer it to our heart, and then express it through our hands. Head, heart, and hands. The problem is, sometimes the message stops right here. Just stops right here. We try to rationalize it. We try to justify it. But we need to move it down here. You've heard about the fellow that missed heaven by 18 inches? Then we are to express it with our hands by bringing food. I am told that there are lines and lines of people at the food bank because of this pandemic. Just seen them there, and it's heartbreaking. But God wants to use our hands. He wants to use your hands. So I encourage us to bring food to the church. There's a tub outside the west entrance. Bring food with you, a canned good, just one. That will help so many people. You can bring I saw somebody bring some this morning. Set it down there. That's great. It's fantastic. So we need to look at the the mandate and the message and the mission of Christ. We need to roll up our fingernails or roll up our sleeves and get our fingernails dirty is what I've 
got jotted down here. Mother Teresa said, and I, and I, and I just want to make mention of this, Jesus showed us again and again how to serve other people. Jesus showed us again and again how to serve other people. And so I, I'll, I'll close here as we are preparing to share in Holy Communion. Everybody's familiar with the famed coach, Vince Lombardi. Vince Lombardi of the Green Bay Packers lost three games in a row, and that just hurt his heart. So during the next game, his team was losing again. So at halftime, the team and the coaches went into the locker room. Instead of sharing an inspiring speech to the team, Vince Lombardi said, we all need to return to the fundamentals. And he held up. He goes, this oval ball is a football. We need to return to the fundamentals. This is the Bible. Maybe, just maybe, the fundamental teachings in here can help us grow further and further into God's grace. It has been said that the Great Commission is the main thing. So I'm going to encourage us to keep the main thing, the main thing. Let's pray. Gracious God and our Father, we give you praise. We give you thanksgiving for the Great Commission that calls us to move, that calls us to go forward. We thank you that Good Shepherd is heading that way, but we need your guidance. We need your motivation. Help us. Help ourselves. We thank you in Christ. Amen and amen. Our offering is a very significant and vital portion of this church. I want to thank you for your faithfulness, for your financial faithfulness as you have shared. However, during this season, we need help, all the help that we can get. And so I'm going to ask us to, there are baskets that, that are available on the entry and exits uh, if you want to send in your gift by mail, we encourage you to do so. If you'd like to use PayPal, we encourage you to do so as we pray about what we're going to give as we share together.
go ahead and sing uh, this little light of mine. This little light of mine. I know that you probably all know this song from when you were a kid. This little light of mine. I'm wasting time while I try to get my music out of here. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. But how many of you in Sunday school ever did this? Hide it under a bushel. No. I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No. I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. You know the song, just follow the words on the screen. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine Now everywhere I go I'm gonna let it shine Everywhere I go I'm gonna let it shine Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Now Jesus gave it to me, and I'm gonna let it shine. Jesus gave it to me, I'm gonna let it shine. Jesus gave it to me, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Thank you very, very much. You may be seated. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Let us go and share those online. Let us prepare our minds and our hearts for communion. And um, the simple piece of bread or the cup of juice that you have there will be transformed into the actual body and blood of Christ. Not the actual body, but it will be symbolized, the symbolic body of Christ um, as we share together. Uh, through the great thanksgiving. At this time, uh, you, will, we, you will share as in bold that is underlined. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. At this time, those online, if you would take a piece of bread and the cup and then partake of the bread and the juice, let us remember this is the body of Christ that has been shed or that has been broken for you and the blood of Christ that has been shed for you. Let us receive the online benediction. Gracious God, we thank you for your blessings upon us. Help us to go, therefore, and spread the word of Christ 
through word and deed in the community of Lucas. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, we here in the sanctuary will receive the bread in the cup. We're not going to go outside. We're not going to go outside. However, we're going to go towards the kitchen area. We're going to go down here to the kitchen area, and then we're going to enter the door, the farthest door, and then I'm going to serve each of you one at a time. Jim is going to go, and he is going to lead you. If you would just follow him in there, that would be helpful. And then I will be on one side of the tables, and then you will be on, on this side of the tables, if that makes any sense. You'll be on this side, and you will come in one at a time and receive the sacrament. <laughs>